I wanted to start off this discussion with my elevator speech on MBBs. This is, I use this on managers, or people who are questioning the value of the program. And, and this is a bit of an advertisement, so I apologize in advance, but it goes something like this. We're talking about internalizing. You want to internalize your program and be able to, uh, to reduce the dependence on outside suppliers. MBBs are the key to rapidly internalizing your, your deployment. Uh, they provide leadership training, coaching, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's a big element of the MBB program. They consistently deliver the big bucks, big projects, top line growth, bottom line savings because of their training. A lot of hard skills, advanced hard skills and soft skills as well. They can help drive the culture change. They accelerate the culture change. These are folks that are, that are and you heard Chuck and Dana this morning, very enthusiastic about what they do. They really believe in it. Uh, they can talk the walk, and so they really spread. It's infectious, uh, the change that they can spread. Uh, they are expert in project selection, project reviews and we'll come back to that topic a bit later. The future business leaders, you take people who think process, who are good at data, who, who, uh, who can lead people, you're describing future managers of your company, right? Okay, so that's, that's my advertisement. Uh, a little bit on the history. Wave one began in January 2000. Joe Ficalora was the original architect for that program. Since then, we've, we've trained 265 master black belts in 20 waves. The program itself is pretty straightforward. We've got a five-week core program, nine electives that are one week long, and we have a certification process that we, uh, that we use as well. And we'll talk a little bit about each one of these. Entry criteria. We, we take special care as we look at folks who are interested in the program. It's important that they have a solid grounding in black belt. Uh, if not, they're going to struggle. And it's embarrassing for us, it's embarrassing for them. So we, we do the screening process in advance. Uh, often we'll ask for endorsements from, the, from their management. If we don't know them, if we don't have experience with the folks, the last thing we want is for someone to come in the room and go, oh my God, you know, this is too much for me. So we, we, we pay attention to this. Uh, we look for potential for leadership. We look for proven soft skills, proven hard skills. So that's, that's the criteria, the criteria. This is the way the program goes. It is extremely fast. And here, MBBs, you can say yay or nay, right? Fast paced, highly interactive, no place to hide. Everybody is engaged every day in, in doing something in the MBB program. Everybody meaning the MBBs are being trained. A lot of team activities, homework, and we are now grading the homework, and we call them case studies. They're very real problems, and they're high-end problems. Homework during the week, uh, we have something called boot camp, which is dear to the hearts of all the MVBs. This is called, this is teach back, where the MVBs will team up and teach back to the classroom, which includes me and the other instructors. And the game is to try and stump the, the, uh, the MVP. We've all taught, or many of you have probably taught material. You get to a slide that's, you're thinking, you're teaching it, but you're thinking, I hate this slide. I hope nobody asks a question about this slide, because I really don't understand it myself. And you kind of just kind of breeze through it. Well, we don't let that happen. We ask the questions, and we have a conversation. So boot camp is, is the real deal. And it really helps folks in terms of preparing to teach in terms of communicating well what they're trying to teach. Something called a personal development plan, I'll come back to that as well. Um, this is the belt's personal business plan. We don't let them get through the program without submitting that. And I kind of like to embarrass them up front. If you don't have a personal development plan, what's wrong with you? Of course, I didn't have one until I was about 50. And I was thinking about leaving my old job, or I was thinking about retirement. But personal development plan. What is it going to deliver to your company, and how are you going to do it? We'll come back to that. So, the program has evolved a lot. Uh, Dana and Chuck, you were way four. You probably wouldn't recognize a lot of it at this point because it's evolved. And the, the evolution has been based on the feedback from the belts themselves and how their role has changed, as well as from the managers, the sponsoring managers. And here's one phenomenon I wanted to try out with this group. Uh, you recognize this slide, it comes in a lot of forms, but it shows the, 
kind of the traditional MVP role on the right and the traditional champion role on the left. Right? So MVPs are kind of the technical alter ego of champions, technical leadership, blah, 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 blah. They assist in project identification. They partner with the champions. Critical role, left-hand side, leadership position, I mean, a lot of things that must happen if you're going to have a successful program. Well, what we hear is that more and more of the MVBs are playing the role of the champion. And so there's an increased importance, an increased emphasis placed on leadership, on communications. And anybody else see this, notice this? I know the MVBs see it because I hear it every week when we're, when we're working with the MVBs. We don't have any champions. Overstated just a little bit, but it's true. The roles are merging. Uh, so, what's the role? Strong technical leadership and strong program leadership. This is how our program breaks down. In response to that, in response to the need for soft skills and hard skills, half our program I would call advanced technical skills, 50%. About 30% is in communications and leadership and about 20% of the time, this is based on time in class, about 20% of the time is improving teaching skills. Uh, this is how we view soft skills, soft skills pyramid. The foundational soft skill is called communicating, speaking and listening, making yourself understood and understanding what others are trying to say. Without that, you, it's, your soft skills are going to be very ineffective. Next level up is teaching and coaching. They're different sides of the same coin. Okay, co coaching is typically one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two versus teaching in front of a group of 30 people. And we cover all of these. Uh, I separated leading and managing because I believe they're very different things. And leadership is getting people who don't work for you to do stuff. It's also <coughs> managing the boss. How do you manage your boss?